Wire wheels suspend the weight of a car with flexible metal spokes arranged in a specific geometric pattern. They start with an aluminum alloy disc. A factory worker clamps the disc in a metal spinning machine. This machine shapes metal as if it were a piece of clay. It spins the disc at a high speed while a series of tools press it to a round form. It takes 20 minutes to transform the flat disc into a wheel rim, complete with a bead for the tire. The process also causes the metal to undergo molecular transformation, one that makes it stronger. After polishing, a worker moves the rim under a tool that punches dimples in it. The dimples will accommodate nuts that will be used to secure the spokes. He drills into the dimples to create holes for attaching the spokes. He angles the holes slightly so that the spokes sit correctly. He stamps the wheel's design number and other identifying information into the outer edge of the wheel rim. By now, the wheel's steel centerpiece has also taken shape. An employee turns it for even spacing as a tool repeatedly punctures it, creating rows of small holes in both the inner ring and outer flange. He then drills those holes larger to prepare for the spokes to be assembled to the part. At the next station, a worker inserts spokes into a press that bends its ends into hooks. The angle of the hook varies depending on the part of the wheel the spoke is to be assembled to. He adjusts the settings on the press to achieve the different bends. Then it's over to an automatic blade that cuts the spokes to length. This also varies. They cut outer spokes longer and inner ones shorter. He now places the ends of the spokes in a device that rolls them against a cutting block to carve threads in the metal in mere seconds. With the spokes now hooked, cut and threaded, the wire wheel is ready for assembly. The employee hooks the appropriate spokes into holes in the centerpiece. He places the aluminum rim around the centerpiece. He attaches the threaded ends of the spokes to the rim using steel nuts that fit into the tapered holes. He screws them loosely into place. He configures the spokes in a crisscross geometric pattern specified by the engineers. This pattern is designed for strength and flexibility, but it also gives the wheel a visual appeal. Once he's laced all the spokes from the centerpiece to the rim, he tightens the fittings. This secures the assembly but it is not the final torque. They now transfer the loosely assembled wire wheel to a shaft and turn a crank to lower the centerpiece within the rim. This brings the spokes into the correct position and a worker tightens them substantially now, all 72 of them. He does the final tweaking by hand. Seven hours in the making, this wire wheel is now ready to roll. With the rubber tire attached, he secures the wheel to the car using a single large nut. It's called a knockoff nut because you simply knock it off to change the tire. It's just one of the things that make the wire wheel a classic choice. <laughs>